Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and in this video I'm at the Bridgeport Mill and I'm going to show you how to set up and center your uh, rotary table properly and accurately so that uh, you can use it with a degree of confidence and accuracy and make, uh, make good parts. But uh, in the next uh, videos, uh, already completed but uh, not shown yet, uh, numbers 203 and 204, I make this uh, crank adapter on the rotary table, but in order to, uh, to make this, you need to center the uh, rotary table as I'm going to show you in this and the next video. This video will, be, will deal with uh, this little rotary table, the 6-incher, and in the next one, I'll show you how to center my Palmgren uh, rotary table, so stand by for that. Not only will I show you how to center this with the spindle of the bridge board, but I'm also going to show you how to center your uh, three-jaw chuck or four-jaw chuck, whatever you happen to use on top of your, uh, your rotary table. Or you may use nothing, but uh, I'll show you this too. And I'm going to show you this by a, a quick and semi-accurate method as well as the more accurate method using dial indicators. On my particular bridge board, the scale for the Accurite, the DRO, is right on the front here. And this interferes with the wheel on this uh, rotary table. Now that may or may not be true with yours, or your scale may be mounted on the back of the table. But notice that uh, the wheel itself is riding right here, and we got a space underneath here, which is no good. So some time ago I made this... Uh, uh, aluminum plate, and this is accurate uh, machining plate. It's uh, a half inch thick, but I mount my table on top of this, and then I center it in a manner such as this. Now make sure you wipe everything off. You can't have any chips or debris underneath there, but these slots pretty well align with these slots, and I use my uh, my T bolts and. Uh, bolt this down, but actually I'm just going to snug it down for now. But notice now I've got plenty of clearance under here to turn my crank without any kind of interference. So that's the purpose of the plate. You may or may not need one of those. And this is a relatively small plate. It's only six inches in diameter. Now why am I going to all this bother? Well if you do not have a reference here where the center of the spindle or the quill lines up with the center of the bore of the table here. You just have no reference at all uh, in regard to the dimensions you're going to uh, machine. So it's necessary to do this probably in almost all cases when you're using a rotary table. I suppose there's exceptions but I always do this. Now notice that I've got the bolts in place here but, and they're just snug but I have plenty of wiggle room yet or this can move around and I'm not going to tighten that yet. Now the hole in here in this particular one is a number two more taper and I noticed that uh, from looking through the catalogs that many uh, rotary tables are made with a Morse taper in here but not all. So double check to see what yours is but this is a Morse taper and here is a Morse taper shank that I'm sticking in there just to show you uh, and uh, prove it to you what it is. But I took a brand new shank that I bought, or Arbor. It's a number two here. And I did saw off the uh, tang because it was just uh, interfering, was in the way. So I sawed that off and put a little bit of a chamfer on there. And uh, on this particular end here, this is exactly three quarters of an inch in diameter. Now, most of your uh, Jacobs Arbors are going to have a Jacobs taper here, but you can buy these uh, in many different styles. But if you're going to use this method, get one with a straight shank right here. What I'm going to show you here is a cheap and easy way without indicators of uh, doing your alignment using, again, this uh, arbor here, three quarter, number two, Morse taper. And here's a three-quarter R8 a collet, which I'm going to put in the spindle here momentarily. And all I'm going to do, and make sure everything's clean when you do this, no chips in there, wipe this off. And I'm going to put that, tap it down in there, and then I'm going to uh, 
put the collet in the spindle and basically using the X and the Y uh, cranks move this into position so it lines up perfectly with the collet. So let me get that started. But I still want to make sure there's just a little bit of wiggle room here before I tighten this down. I made this extra thick washer here for a reason and I'm going to put that on there and I may or may not need it but the whole idea here is if I can't get this to pop back up out of the tapered hole I can use wedges under here to pop it out without taking everything apart and tapping this from the other end uh, that is the bottom of the of the rotary table so again wiping that off with that washer on there tap it down and I've already got the three-quarter collet in there and I'm going to move the table around now until I get my alignment. Now I'm showing you just a slightly alternate method of doing this and this might be preferable but I have the, the shank mounted in the collet now and again I got a little wiggle room here and I'm going to put the washer on there just in case I need it and bring this down into I slapped her down into the table. Now the table now without putting too much pressure on, I'm going to back off the pressure on the quill just a little bit and you can see that I'm able to move this around and by doing that I'm hoping that it floats wiggling around like this floats into alignment. Now I will snug the nuts up just a little bit equally both sides so you do not influence it or move it because we're talking about thousands of an inch here now snug them up until I got them tight enough for working now I may be able to pop this arbor out I'm done with it now by forcing up on the quill right here but I don't want to damage anything but and I did pop it out but it won't always pop out. Let me show you the alternate way. I probably waste a lot of time, your time and mine, by showing you different methods, alternate methods, but again uh, at this point the arbor is pretty tight in, into the table, but using the washer and a couple of brass wedges I can easily get it out of there. And now we'll set this aside. We're basically done with it for now. And I'm going to confirm with the dial indicator now to see how accurately I have uh, positioned it. But before I do that, I got it in position now, I'm going to turn the digital readout on. And I've zeroed it out and presumably we're aligned at least semi-accurately and probably plenty accurate for a lot of work that you might do with a rotary table. I have mounted my Sterrett last word indicator directly in a 3 16 collet and there's a ball joint there so this can be adjusted around and of course you can use any kind of indicator you own or whatever your little heart desires but in this case I'm using the last word one of my favorite indicators and as I lower the quill I've already pre-adjusted this into the hole and it's coming up to zero. Now remember that the hole is tapered. So, and I'm proving it right now by going up and down and showing you that it's, it's tapered, but I'm going to put it right on the zero now. And I'm going to rotate the spindle, not under power, do not turn the machine on. I'm not turning the machine on uh, at all until I get with the coaxial uh, indicator at which time I will roll up my sleeves, but let's see how accurate it is. I'll spin it around 180 degrees But I need to get my mirror there to, to look at it. And that's the inconvenience of using this type of indicator, but uh, uh, Naturally you can't see it. And I would have to stick my head back here, but uh, let me grab my inspection mirror Okay, I've got my inspection mirror from the dollar store and uh, uh, I turned it back to, to zero here. Now it may look a little bit off of uh, zero because of parallax error, but uh, watch the mirror now as I rotate it around 180 degrees and I'm within, oh, I got to get a little closer, 
within a half a thousandth or a thousandth or so. So it's, it's right on, and this is in the uh, Y axis. So let me reposition the camera and do it in the X axis. So that that way is good, but it, it, that does not necessarily mean it'll be perfect in the other axis. Now let's have a look-see in the x-axis, and we're right on zero there. And I have not changed the face on that, so it has remained the same. I'll turn that 180 degrees, and you can see there's an inconvenience using this type of, uh, of indicator, and it's pretty much, uh, it's about a half a thousandth or one thousandth off that way. So you can see that this method here is really quite accurate, or reasonably accurate, however not perfect. Now, since I've got the indicator on there at the, at the moment now, I could correct it very easily and get it right on. In fact, that's what I will do here in the next clip. The DRO is still in the zero position from the previous uh, experiment here, using the, uh, the shank. So I'm going to purposely uh, Take it out, oh, I won't, maybe seven thousandths that way, and, and I'm, you know, about six and a half thousandths there. And now I'll use the indicator to bring it back in, but I'm not going to look at the DRO. Of course, uh, that, that is meaningless right now until I use the indicator and bring it back in. Although there is a reference right now, because I know where the zero is, I could dial it back in, but that would defeat the purpose of this demonstration. So back down here to the indicator. Just so it isn't too easy on myself, I'm moving the, the dial a little bit so I don't have the reference that I had a minute ago. I don't know where the zero is now. But before you use an indicator, try to align the spindle uh, as close as you can with the center of the bore on the table, the rotary table. And you can do that by sticking uh, oh, an end mill in there or just a piece of uh, uh, half inch shank or whatever so that you can eyeball it that you're about in the center of the hole. These indicators only have a range of about 30,000 so if you're way way off to one side uh, you're going to struggle with it. So I'll bring it down into the hole and then I like to zero it out. There are different ways of doing this but it's if you haven't done it before, it's, it's a little confusing. And then, again, I'm working only in the y-axis now. Forget about the other direction. And I'll swing it around. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that. But I am a full... Well, about five thousandths off. So now I'm going to uh, zero out the digital readout. And I'm looking at that now and I'm going to move it uh, five thousandths. Or actually half of that amount. And swing it around. And you can see now I'm about four thousandths. Adjust it a little bit. And I got just a little bit more to go. Remember, you're splitting the difference. And there we are. We're on zero. And I'm on zero back here. Okay, so I'm good in the uh, Y axis. Now I'll move the camera. Now let's uh, indicate it here in the uh, x-axis. I've got my hand in there to hold the focus, otherwise the automatic focus goes wild. But uh, take an initial reading here. We're on five thousandths on this side, and when I spin it on the other side, which you can't see, but I'm moving my head over here, it's uh, five thousandths on the other side of zero. So we've got a total of about ten thousandths that we're off. So I'm just going to dial this in until it's on the zero and, and take another reading. It's on zero on this side and I'll spin it around and I've got my hand up on the motor and that's how I'm spinning it. Do not turn the machine on. 
and there I brought it around to the other side I'm, I'm looking at it and uh, it's on zero there so that was an easy one and then I would uh, of course push the zero reset the digital readout and I'm right on and then I could lock the spindle in uh, both directions if I wanted to hold it there or I would uh, zero out that digital readout and then just keep the digital readout uh, uh, zeros in memory until I complete the job whatever it, it uh, is and sometimes I leave and even leave the DRO on overnight so that's how to do it with a simple uh, indicator like this uh, uh, last word indicator in the next video where I use the uh, Palmgren uh, rotary table I will use the coaxial indicator which is right here rather than the little last word indicator so this is a lot easier to use but they cost about a hundred dollars but I will demonstrate that and I have used that in a, in a previous video as well but it's, it's really so much easier to use because you don't need this pesky mirror so look for that in the next video but now let me show you yet one more step here on this little uh, rotary table when you use a rotary table there are many different ways of holding your work and quite often it's going to be bolted directly to the table using uh, T-bolts and uh, in these slots here but a lot of the work that I do is uh, held in, a, in three jaw chucks and here's a little chuck that you might have seen in some of my other videos but I have a, a number two Morse tape around there and that can just be driven in there and this is for light work because there's no way to uh, to, to fasten this in here permanently other than uh, the self-holding uh, number two more taper for but for light work within the capacity of this little chuck it works just fine but uh, again this will only hold up to about inch or inch and a half uh, work so I either use this and that's self-centering see I don't need to do any more with it but if I use my other chuck this one here I have to center it also or all is for naught and I'm going to show you how to do that now and this is nothing more than a four inch uh, three jaw chuck it's a little buck chuck that I borrowed off of another lathe and it is mounted again on a piece of six inch machined aluminum here tooling aluminum is what it is and there are two holes that I'll use uh, with bolts to hold uh, hold this down into uh, T-nuts but I need to center this also and I'm going to do that just by a simple method of uh, holding a, a piece of one inch uh, or half inch stock in here it doesn't matter what size it is but remember that three jaw chucks are quite often uh, inaccurate this is a buck so it's a pretty good chuck but uh, uh, how far out around uh, it is how far uh, uh, how much run out uh, I, I don't know but again it's going to be close enough for most of what I do so here's how I center this chuck on the rotary table this is a 5 8 diameter dowel pin about three inches long two and a half inches doesn't matter and this could be any diameter but don't use a real small one I'd use anything from half inch on up and I put a 5 8 collet into the spindle already and I will tighten this down with a goodly amount hanging out I'm just going to snug this up good in the collet doesn't need to be real tight now I'll take my chuck and you can make make up one of these using one of your lathe chucks depending of course on the size of your rotary table this is really a small table now make sure that the bottom of this is clean no burrs table is clean now we can lay that on there just like this and what I like to do but before I tighten this down onto the jaws I need to get my T-bolts or my T-nuts rather and my bolts these are 3 8 bolts I'm going to get those started. This is a little bit awkward to do, so I'm going to do that off camera and be back in 30 seconds. When I made this plate, I decided to just use two bolts, and it's tight enough for small work, but you may need four bolts on a larger uh, chuck. 
But with two bolts, and they're just loose yet, they're finger tight, barely finger tight, I have again that wiggle room. See, a lot more in this direction than what I do over here, but nevertheless, when I uh, constructed this, I did center the, uh, the chuck on the center of the six inch aluminum plate so that when I'm uh, even right around here, I'm approximately in the location that I want to be. So now I'll bring that that down like that and I'm going to snug this up. Snug the chuck up. That's all the tighter it needs to be. And you see it's held pretty well in the center now. I'm still able to rotate it, but I'm not able to go in all directions. I'm just able to rotate it a little bit. And now these will be tightened up. And always snug them up like you would the head bolts. So snug it on one side, snug it on the other, back and forth so that you're getting it even. That being done, this is pretty well centered. Now it doesn't do any good to put an indicator on there because we don't really know how accurate this little chuck is. And Because I, I have used it on my lathe but I don't remember because I got so many different lathes and so many different chucks. But basically what I've done here now is to center the chuck on the table which is already centered and it's all on zero and that's in memory. So I'm ready to start the project, whatever it may be. And in this case, in the next videos, I'm using it with this setup to make this uh, adapter. So be sure and watch those videos too. So that's it for this little 6-inch rotary table. And stay tuned then for the next video where I'm going to uh, do similar operation with that little palm grin. Actually, it's a larger 8-inch palm grin rotary table. And I'm going to use the coaxial indicator on that, which actually is easier to use and kind of fun. So I'll see you on the next video. And this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.